we are wrapping up 2023 and we are getting ready to start 2024. And we start thinking about our goals, about our New Year's resolution. And we think about areas such as health, fitness, finances, personal growth. When it comes to your parenting, do you have parenting goals for 2024? I do. I do have parenting goals, very specific goals that I want to reach to bring more peace to my parenting, considering that I am newly diagnosed with autism mother who is raising twins. One of them is neurodivergent. And I'm going to share with you what my goals are and the things that I'm going to do to achieve those goals. I want to go back to the end of 2022 and ask you a question. Do you reach your 2023 parenting goals? And I want to acknowledge so many of our clients in HIC Parenting who made 2023 a priority when it comes to reaching their parenting goals, who came to HIC with a big desire to parent their children peacefully and with limits, and they found so, so much transformation in their parenting. So I'm going to share with you some of the success stories and encourage you and motivate you that if this could happen for all those parents who are just parents like you, they don't have a child development degree, they don't have experience working with children, they're just parents who have a big desire and who say yes to parenting coaching in HIC parenting. These are their stories. It's been a lot calmer uh, lately. It has been easier. I, I have noticed the tension has been brought down. To provide it, we have not had a head banging incident in two weeks. It has really helped calm her frustration. Instead of us saying, okay, the timer's going off, let's just go and, you know, I've seen huge improvements in our relationship, even though she's only 22 months old, of just her, you know, really cooperating instead of everything being a struggle. It is going to help you build a relationship with your child that will help them feel safe, secure, and want to be with you versus what I was doing, which was leading my kids further and further away, hoping that they would leave soon you know they're excited to leave and now they just want to be with me and they feel safe and that brings the relationship so much closer and it just it's incredible this was a great year for me and it was a very challenging year i lost my mother-in-law and that was very unexpected my mom got a heart attack. She's doing wonderful, awesome, but that added a lot of stress to me. And then I had a last minute trip to Colombia. I came back. There were many things happening. And one of the biggest things that happened is that I was diagnosed with autism. And one of my sons got evaluated as well. So I ended this 2024 very thankful and happy about the parent that I was in 2024, despite all the challenges. And I encourage you to see that as well. Despite all your challenges, those challenges were a sign that you are an overcomer. They are a sign that you can absolutely parent your children peacefully despite all the things that happened in this year. And that's how I see 2023. Now, this year left me a bucket list of things to work on. One of those things is me as a newly diagnosed autistic. It felt to me like a hot potato dropped on my hands and I didn't know what to do with it. I'm still kind of juggling it. On top of being a parent, of a neurodivergent child. So for 2024, my focus is going to be, number one, to learn to the core my support needs so I could confidently keep parenting my kids from a deeper understanding of myself. So before I was diagnosed, I still had support needs. I still am who I am. I, I was born autistic. 
But the difference was because I was not so aware of what was going on for me, then I tended to deny my needs or to brush them under the rug or to even gaslight myself about, hey, Marcela, get it together. Like, how come you are so overwhelmed in this playground and all the moms seem so calm? You should be calm as well. Now that I know that those are autistic traits, and that's why it's hard for me to commit to take my twins to the park every single day of the good season weather. Now I know that those are things that are part of me for being autistic. And then I need to find a plan to still enjoy my kids and enjoy my parenting while taking care of my needs. And I started working already on that. I went to a soccer practice with the twins that usually left me depleted in the car. Many times in the car, I had like little meltdowns. Uh, now I know that all that sensory stimulation, the people yelling, the brightness of the sun, the wind, all those things add up to my sensory overload. So last time that my twins had a soccer practice, I took my noise canceling headphones, I did some meditation. I proactively took care of my needs before they came in, in the form of a meltdown. So how can you be more aware of your needs? You might not have a specific diagnosis or maybe you do, but whether you have it or not, all humans have needs. So instead of putting all that weight on you and trying to be all things and trying to do everything and trying to juggle everything, but at the end of the day, you're so depleted that there is nothing left on you, or you become a parent that you don't want to be at the end of the day, all because exhaustion. How can you be proactively thinking about your needs and plan on how you're going to support yourself and meet your needs while the daily activities happen? So. If you are watching on YouTube, I want to show you a few things. So I have this fidget tool. This is a toy if you're not watching. If you're just listening to the podcast, I have in my hands a fidget tool from Ono Roller brand. I think that's the brand. And this has helped me so, so much because I have the need for steaming, for sensory stimulation. So allowing myself to have just this in my hand all day and getting that sensory stimulation has helped me not let it pile up in me that energy because when it happens, I get overwhelmed with my own self. So that's one way that I'm planning. I bought this, let me show it to you if you're watching from YouTube, this noise reduction earplugs. And they come with a hole, meaning that you can still hear, but a very more comfortable volume, at least for me. And I've been using it throughout the day, just parenting. And then I do notice the difference, the, the difference compared to when I don't have them, meaning that my kids trigger me less, their yelling triggers me less, when they cry that triggers me less. So how can you find those support systems to place around you? My second goal for 2024 is understanding at a deeper level, my children's needs. So I've been a student and obsessed over needs when it comes to children's needs, especially the ones they communicate through really tough, big behaviors. On 2013, I had the biggest discovery of my life, literally, and it was the research of Dr. William Glasser. He's a researcher in needs, and he found that every single behavior communicates a need. So everything started making sense for me. Why my son in foster care had so many meltdowns when we needed to leave the house, right? That was a trauma response for them because when he left the house one day, he was dropped off at foster care. It made sense to me so many things that were happening at that moment, the bedtime meltdowns, the aggression, 
the defiance, all those behaviors. Remember your child's biggest behavior, those behaviors, all of them communicate any. So I always been a student of children's needs beneath behaviors. And that's why I based entire methodology here in HIC parenting, we support our clients understanding their needs and their children's needs and from there creating a customized plan for them to have more peace in their parenting by meeting everyone's needs or being aware of everybody's needs even if they cannot meet them all so that's been the parenting with understanding methodology and i'm an expert in that now there is something that was added to my plate <laughs> that was added to me this year and it was the fact that my son got evaluated for autism and now i know that he's a neurodivergent child and even though i have experience working with neurodivergent kids in the foster care system i care for kids with adhd with mood disorder with cognitive delay with ocd with odd this is the first time that I encounter autism. And it's the first time as well that I realize, I know now I'm diagnosed with autism. So now that I know that I have that need on my hands, I'm, my goal for 2024 is to be an expert of my son's support needs. Because when I become an expert of his needs, and I see behaviors, I start to understand ahead of the struggle, ahead of the meltdown, ahead of the things that he does, how I need to respond in order to set him up for success. I started doing it already. This week, my twins, they were building gingerbread houses. And I know that one of my son's support needs is that in order for him to cognitively process play, he needs to be very organized and sequenced and things need to have a very logical order for him. And they, if they're not that way, then he gets really overwhelmed and frustrated. So in the past, I was not aware of that need and now I am. And what happened is that it sparked a lot of sibling conflict in the past because my older son is more impulsive. So he wants to get right to the action. He wants to start building things right away. And that's exactly what happened here. My neurotypical child, he wanted to start building the gingerbread house right away. And my neurodivergent son, he wanted to take his time to line up all the cookie pieces first and the decorations, the little gummies and the little candies. He lined everything up perfectly before his brain was ready to process the activity and start building. So in the past, I would have seen my other son desperately trying to get into action and the other one taking up his time. I wouldn't understood that all the way and I would have pressure my neurodivergent son to start playing. Hey, just start building how it's okay if it's not lined up perfectly. It's okay if the candy is not sorted by color. We can start building the gingerbread house right now. That would have been a recipe for disaster. But because I now am aware of his needs, I got ahead of the struggle. I got ahead of the anticipated sibling conflict there. And what I did is that I allow each one of my sons to engage, to have the first encounter with the gingerbread house building activity, the way that their brain requires. I bought two gingerbread houses and instead of placing them side by side, they were one in front of the other. So they still had the table between them. And that allowed the physical space for each one of them to start initiating the activity, how their brain was needing to initiate. My neurodivergent son lined up the pieces perfectly and he started building and the other one started getting into the action right away. And I saw a beautiful thing happening. As the activity progressed, then they started communicating and they started sharing the glue, sharing pieces. They started helping each other hold the roof up while the other one was trying to put the glue on the top. 
naturally they started finding a way to play cooperatively but because their needs were met and i was able to provide that optimum sibling space to build that gingerbread house because i understood both of my children's needs to the core and i want to understand them even deeper and that's my goal for 2024 i'm going to do whatever it takes and that could mean accessing professional help, not just from therapists, but from parenting coaches who are specialized in autism. I'm going to bring to HIC Parenting more specialized help for parents like me who have an autistic child. So I could learn from them and I can learn as well to best support parents who are in my same journey. So that's my biggest goal for 2024 when it comes to my children's needs. If you are now dealing with a lot of frustration, sibling conflict, fights, hitting, struggle, stalling, defiance, the solution is to get really, really good at understanding the needs beneath all those behaviors. Because when you understand those needs, you are able to get ahead of the struggle and set your children's environment up for success and meet the need before it's manifested through all those unwanted behaviors. That's basically what takes our clients from frustrated to confident and calm. When we help them become experts in their particular children's needs, and set up that environment to meet those needs, that's when they start seeing less fights, less defiance, less power struggle, and more of the calm, cooperation, connection, trust. That's our parenting with understanding methodology. And I want to keep diving deep and accessing deeper layers of this methodology so I could best, number one, support myself parenting a neurodivergent child, and number two, support you with the nuances of your child's needs. And I'm talking about my parenting coaching clients. My last goal for 2024 is bringing back family meetings. So I did foster care for a long time. When my foster son came to my care, he was almost eight years old. And then he stayed in my house until he became an adult. Now he's grown and gone and he's starting to be a therapist. But anyway, we did family meetings and those were so powerful because instead of being on the defensive side, waiting for the struggle to drop at my foot to see what, how I'm going to manage it, those family meetings allow us to come as a family and to troubleshoot things that were happening in the daily routine, in the house, in the relationship, in the communication, in the management of emotions and create plans that support us through those times. I remember my foster son, he was dealing with a lot of bedtime stalling. I need a little more water. I need to do this. I need to go pee again. I need to do that. And then the bedtime was dragging for a long time. So on our family meeting, without judgment, without like, you have to get it together. No, without that energy, but with the energy of this is what we have right now. Let's brainstorm ideas. He had a brilliant idea that it didn't come to me. It came to him. Like I wouldn't thought about it myself. And he did at nine years old. So he said, hmm, it seems like I had a lot of bedtime wishes. What about if we create a bedtime wish basket with different options? And then every night I get to go in there and choose one of those bedtime wishes. And that's my bedtime wish. And I don't have more. My next one is going to be the next day. So he created a little basket. It was very cute with his favorite characters and all. And then he started writing down the wishes that he wanted to have. And then I approved them, some of them, not all of them. We put them in the basket. And every night he started picking out one little wish, reading it out loud. And that was it. No more bedtime stalling. He went right to bed. Why? Because it was his idea. 
because he created the idea, because he created the accountability system, and because it was a proactive measure instead of a reactive, I'm exhausted, I'm yelling at you measure. It was not rooted in fear. It was not rooted in a consequence, on a punishment, on making me feel bad about stolen bedtime so much. It was proactive. And he corrected that behavior beautifully. And it came from his head. It was his idea. And that came up during a family meeting. So we stopped those when he left because the twins were so young. We couldn't really do family meetings with two one-year-olds. <laughs> but now they're almost eight. And this is the perfect age to start bringing back those family meetings to troubleshoot some things. And I'm going to start even right now, this week, I could do a family meeting and talk about the after school routine because it's been a little struggle. And I'm very curious to see what the twins ideas are to make it a little more peaceful after school. So that's another goal that I have for 2024. I really have three goals, three simple yet deep goals. Number one, to keep learning and understanding my support needs as an autistic mother. Number two, to understand to the core my twins needs and other children's needs so I can best support myself as a parent and support my coaching clients in HIC parenting. And number three, I'm going to bring back family meetings so I'm able to get ahead of the struggle and involve my twins in the troubleshooting how we can make our life more peaceful, more enjoyable, and the routine a lot easier. Now, my question for you is, what are your parenting goals in 2024? Do you have parenting goals? What are those? Let me know in the comments if you are watching from YouTube. If you are listening to the podcast, I want you to think, what are your specific goals for 2024? Whether they are more general, more foundational, such as, I just wanted to stop yelling. I just want to be calm. I just want to be a regulated parent. I just want to have more patience. I just want to have a better relationship with my child. Whether it's that big, general, foundational goal or a more nuanced goal, such as my goals, I want to tell you that it is possible. It is possible because... We've seen it so, so many times with hundreds of our clients in HIC parenting. And I wanna tell you as well that you don't have to do this alone. I'm sure that some of the goals that you have for 2024, you had them for 2023. If you were not able to achieve those goals in 2023, with the level of support that you have right now, which it might be you want a book or you want a social media tip or you on listening to this podcast, if that was not enough, that's a sign that you might need to take the next step. And the next step, the next available step is to access the direct guidance from a parenting coach who's been there, who knows exactly the roadmap to bring more peace to your home, to raise emotionally healthy children who've been supporting parents for years. And that's what we can help you with here in HIC Parenting Education. We've helped 10,000 clients break their cycle of frustration, yelling, bring more peace to their homes and raise emotionally healthy children. And we've done it through direct coaching. And why? Because we get to understand their needs, their children's needs, and develop a tailored plan that works for them. If your goal for 2024 is to access parenting coaching, my invitation is, if that's your plan, to enroll now for two big reasons. Number one, so you start the year strong with all the support that you need. And number two, so you lock in 2023 pricing because we are adding extra features. We are adding extra support. We are adding my direct guidance as well besides the coaches. So if you enroll during this week, 
until December 31st, you will be able to lock in 2023 pricing with all the 2024 benefits, with all the new features. If you enroll once 2024 starts, then you will have to enroll with 2024 pricing. So the next step is just go to apply.hicparenting.com, choose a date and a time that works for you, book a free parenting assessment call. On that call, you are going to be with me or with one of our HIC advisors, and we are going to get to understand your needs, your desires. And from there, we are going to lay out that roadmap for you. And you will decide if you are going to access our direct guidance to help you apply that roadmap so you can get to your 2024 goals a lot faster and easier, or if you're going to do it on your own. Either one of those options are completely valid and okay. So just go to apply.hicparenting.com or go to the link in my bio at Heimpet Club. I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. Just go to that link on my profile and then book your free parenting assessment call before all the slots are taken because basically you are taking some of our slots, our time, our our time is very limited. So if those slots are already taken, then we might not be able to help you or enroll you or answer your questions. So go right now there, book your call, and then get on a call with us. Let's talk about your parenting, and you are going to decide if you are going to start 2024 in HIC Parenting Education. Write in the comments if you are watching us from YouTube, what is your number one goal for 2024 when it comes to your parenting. I want to let you know if you heard many great things on this episode and you want the show notes, just go to hicparenting.com and you will see written blog posts with all the show notes and follow us on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube at High Impact Club. And remember that it only takes understanding of yourself and understanding of your children to transform your parenting. That's Parenting with Understanding. I'll see you next time. Thank you.